rock on the track. Welcome to Emerse Podcast 360. I'm your host, Maserati. We want to thank you for tuning in. No matter where you are in this metaverse world, we're going to continue to bring you the best quality content and formula that we know how. We want to thank you guys for tuning in for this episode of Pioneer Wednesday. This show is being brought to you by Rochelle Family Insurance Agency and your own Involved Social and Civic Club. We want to thank you guys for all the likes, shares, and subscriptions on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok and YouTube, we greatly appreciate all of the love. And guys, do we have a pioneer for you guys in Scrop City tonight? He is a pioneer in this political field. He's a bishop. He's a minister. He has been on this journey, and he shows you what the meaning of perseverance and faith really is. You guys, get your popcorn. We're going to set the record straight. It's Pioneer Wednesday with a legend. He is the senior pastor of Seeking God Ministry, COGP. He's the international chairman of the Benevolence Community for the COGP. He's the state bishop for Louisiana, the Southern Dices chairman, national trustee, one of four, presiding prelate of Louisiana, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. He's a voting council member for the COGP, member of the Northeast, or North, excuse me, North Morehouse Singing Unit, Presently serving as president, member of the Mohouse Parish Democratic Executive Committee, pres- presently serving as the president. He sits on the board of directors for the concerned clergy of Mohouse Parish, and he's newly elected councilman for the city of Bashkop. I give you none other, my uncle, and proud of him, Bishop Charles H. Bradford. How you doing today, Bishop? I'm doing fine. Thank you. We are so honored to have you, uh, you know, you're my uncle. We're going to get set the uh, record straight about that tonight. And uh, we just want to know more about you. We're proud of you. You know, we, you, we know you've been on this journey 30-some years uh, from mayor, uh, running for state representative. For the people that don't really know Bishop Bradford, let them know about Charlie Chuck. Well, Billy, uh, I'm a native of Bastrop, just at home, and a pioneer, as you say, working civil rights activist. And I always have the people's at heart. In this community, this is home, and uh, I feel good to be working, that God elevated me to work in this position. Well, you know, kind of share with the people about how was it for you growing up in Scrop City uh, back in the days and the transformation and the things you've seen change over your period of time? Well, as a kid in Bastrop, born in 53, uh, grew up in Bastrop, um, uh, we was more, I guess, say a black community. We we didn't have much mix in, but my father was a shoemaker. He, he served this community for forty years, and uh, I grew up. I went to OLAC, Bastrop. I mean, uh, Morehouse, and we you know, we moved to Michigan. And I returned back at an at age. I had a business here, the first black business really on the square, Louisiana Appetizer and Sale, and. Uh, they're trying to deal with the change. I, I can say now, I think we are moving in the right direction for you know, communication between races. And uh, just looking forward to these days that God had me left for me to work and do and leave a legend, a legend for the community to, to stand on. Right, right. You know, when you talk about uh, you being a legend in the community uh, and leaving a legacy, but kind of share with the people about the perseverance and the faith and the journey and the passion and what kept you driving to to you done ran for pretty much every political office. What 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 is the passion and the drive behind that? Have keeping the faith is the worst thing. Keeping the faith, keeping your heart open to serve the peoples and just wait on God. I mean that's that's basically what I did and over the thirty years. I never gave up and I like to share with every young person in this world. You know, keep your dream. Don't give up. It may not be, you know, there right then. It might not be instant, but God is always on time. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and, and you speak about that. We know you're a bishop. You now have your own ministry, Seeking God Ministry. But I want to know, who are some of the uh, inspirational people? Because I see you on a picture with 
a, a group of legends, uh, Mr. Alexander, uh, Mr. Smith, Mayor Hawkins, Mayor Cotton. Who were some of the guys that inspired you coming up in Scrap City? Oh, those, those names you call were definitely very inspiring, along with Reverend Charles S. Byrd. Uh, like I say, uh, several, uh, you named most of them, Miss Julia May Smith, Miss Gladys Montgomery, Reverend J.R. Ligon, you know, the pioneers that tried to move the community forward. And I was really molded up under them, you know, to do what I have to do when my time come, you know, and that's where we are. It, I, like I said, I guess it's my time. I know it's my time because God put me here. Right, you know, and, and being that you've been on this political journey and you've been fighting for the people, that, let's go back in time to the days when you was the president of the NAACP. How do you feel about the NAACP now as an organization? NAACP is still a valid uh, organization. Uh they still stand for, you know, progress in the community. And I think they are very active in some parts of the country. Uh, we need to be more active here in Mohawk Parish. I mean, it's a shame that we have all the issues. that NWSP have 26 committees, education, home, housing, uh, crime, voter rights, and it's just a shame that we don't have the input in Mohawk Parish that we need to be effective with the NAACP. If we get there and it's already drawn out, we just have to spin the wheel and go forward, help build our community, especially where we have racial and different things of that nature in education. Let's look at our education system, for instance. Uh, NAACP could be very effective in Mohawk Parish. We had a brand that was really active and, you know, really they could give us a whole lot of input on how to establish our education where it can be beneficial to the community overall. Right, and, and most definitely. And, you know, and we look at it and we talk about the, the, the educational system and then we talk about the governing body as the city. How, how and I, we're going to get deeper into this, but I want to know how do you feel about that collaboration? Like, do we really need to separate them that much or do we need to really, really come together and work together? Oh, definitely need to work together, no doubt about it. Team, you know, work, team, team, make, team work with the dream work. If we can work together on all our different agencies here, even the shaft department. But we have, if we can get the shaft department, the police jury, every agent we have here in Northeast Louisiana working together on a common cause, doing the way the work is need, we, we can do nothing but be successful. I mean, we don't have to invent the wheel. The wheel is already there. We got to do it, stand and spin it, and you know, and respect one another and go forward in this community. Right. You know, we're going to take an intermission, but when we take this intermission and come back, I, I want to dig into uh, what do you think it was beyond it being your time from a people standpoint, what would you think took so long for you finally, the people finally to understand that you demand to sit on one of these seats when we come back out this intermission? We're still here with pioneer, Scrap City legend himself, Mr. Charlie Chuck Bishop, Charles H. Bradford, is in the building when we return after this short intermission. Immerse 360 Podcast focuses on uplifting rural and urban areas and dire conditions with no solutions by shedding light on pioneers, athletes, and political figures who have made an impression on Northeast Louisiana and surrounding areas. Immerse understands the social and civic needs to love, learn, live, and laugh. So tap in every Sunday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. on all social networks and platforms. Always remember, Immerse 360. Welcome back. Welcome back to Emerge 360. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Kick Thrones of Scrap City, Louisiana. Bro Ink Photography. Shout out to Kawan Lady. Kawan Whaley. Excuse me, Kawan, for that. And to Mo House Community Development. We were still here with Bishop Charles H. Bradford, newly elected city council of Scrap City, the man for the job, 31 years on the grind, trying to get his voice heard in the correct manner. Is in the building. Bishop Bradford, before we went to intermission and we came back, I want to know, what do you think took so long for the people to finally understand that you were and are the man to sit on one of these political seats? Well, I think they're more aware. I think the people today 
is more aware of what the need, they need a person with a voice, a person's going to tell the truth and come forward with what we need to develop our community. You know, I, I like to thank the voters in District B, those who voted for me as well as those who did not. Uh, we got to work together, and I think they know that it's time to, for a movement in Bastrop. We must go forward. Like I said earlier, our education, we ain't go nowhere until we got our education on the right accord. You know, we got $32 million uh, from COVID, and I can't see anything. I mean, a playground over at Mohouse uh, 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 Elementary over there and, and a few fences in a, in a track field. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm just disappointed in our school board system. Uh, to get $32 million, nothing to show for it. Uh, they take... 24% of it for administration, and then had the nerve to add to I think the people answered them in, uh, out loud that they were not entitled to ask to come before the taxpayers and ask for any money because what, they, they can't explain the $32 million. I mean, we should be, uh, we, we should be having everything in the state of art with that kind of money. And they have the nerve to put foundations and bathroom. They could have fixed a bathroom. <laughs> I mean, the bathroom? They're asking us now to fix a bathroom after having $32 million. We must, we must get involved in our education system. Parents, you must get up and go to those meetings. It, we can't say, well, the white folks, it's for the three. No, we got to be present. And they have to represent according to our needs and our desire for our kids in education. I don't care what color you are. We are we are past that state. If they can't, if they're just voting because they keep African Americans down, that's that's pitiful on their behalf. And I can't see some of them sitting on the school board don't even have kids in the system. They are controlling our community, our, our education. You take for instance, that's the biggest revenue coming into the past. Them kids get about eight or nine thousand dollars per head. Think about that, and and and. It just don't show uh, right now. Uh, I was speaking to some of my athletics people. Uh, we got a track field that was built six lanes, and we can't even com- have host district tournaments because it, it requires eight lanes. Why build six? We got to learn to bring people into our community. You know, somebody could, we, we could host a district track meet that bring revenues into the community. We got to. Look at it like that from that you know perspective. What can we do to advance our community, our children's our community? And when we do that, get our education system together, our crime will go down. See, I don't care we hire 400 police officers, pay them $100 an hour, until the community come together and work, it, it won't work. It's going to take all of us, in other words. It's a community effort. A litter. I go in some part of my district, and the litter in our community, uh, it, it's just ridiculous the way it looks. But like I say, I really feel strong about a change or a togetherness, a un- united effort for it to take place in our community, black and white. We're going to take a community effort and move forward and take this community to another level. Well, Bishop, one thing that I, I, I've noticed uh, in, in my stint trying to help and do different things. Sometimes it's not the idea or, 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 or the plan. It, it's the person that presents that they have a, a problem with. Oh, definitely. definitely. They, have their pick. they have their pick and choose. Uh, uh, it's just been like that. You know, you take, for instance, who all bring the message, make, you know, who child it is. <laughs> you know, we, we, we got to get out of that. We all God children and we all somebody. And we got to start treating people like that. From all walks of life, you never know who will bring, have, who, who's carrying the message for success in this community. You know, we got we to be open, an open heart, open mind to receive. No matter what walk of life they come from, they're still a child of God. Right. And, you know, we understand that, you know, uh, uh, politics is a, it's a tricky game. It, it, it's, 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 a, it's a crazy game. But it shouldn't be a game. It, it definitely shouldn't be a game. How how do you feel about our current situation as a city as a whole? That that's that's including the school system, uh, the operational governing body. 
what, what changes do you see need to be made, or, or how do you see us sitting right now? Well, right now we're not we're we're a flunking education system. You know, we're a flunking education system. Our city, we're not creating jobs. We're not working together. As I said earlier, it's going to take all agencies and government bodies in this community to come together. Everybody working in a separate, going their own way, doing their own thing. It, it's not, it don't work like that. We are one united community, and that's where you build a community. Everybody working together. You know, that, that help crime. That, that we work together, we, we can eliminate our crime. We, we, we work together, we can do more in education. Our hospitals need improvement. It, it's just overall things that we need to do as a community. The hospitals, education, uh, jobs, and that, that builds a community. And, and again, I want to express how important it is that we get our education together because that's the wheel that, that, that turns, you know, it, it, it turns the whole thing. No one going to come into our education system where it's flunking, uh, where, where, where it's, it, it's not working, the kids are just being really being misused. This thing just started. Don't get me wrong, and I'm not picking at the current board, mm-hmm. but I hope that they open their eyes and realize how important education is that these kids get the right education and move forward for the crime reason. If we educate, we kill crime. There's no way to kill crime for educating, not not respect the police. No, yeah, we need officers. And we all need to be involved. We all police is anyway. That's what I tell myself. Because you see a crime go down, especially on your on your family or somebody, you gonna call who? Yeah, police. The police. Right, right, right. Most definitely. Most definitely. You gonna call the police? See, you, you, if a crime takes place on, on on your property or your criminal, right? You would then you become the police. Right. Well, if you see it happening on somebody else's property, your neighbor, don't you supposed to protect your neighbor, respect your neighbor? And we need to do that. That's not in Bastrop. This, this is a national thing. You're talking about the police. We we, we need to go forward, and, and the police is good, but it's still boiled down to the community, the respect for one another. You know, we got to respect one another. I mean, I just left a situation. I have been sworn in here, thank the Lord. <laughs> but I just got left a situation over in my district. A young man called me where they're throwing garbage bags and toys out, in, you know, that's where they're throwing their garbage. You don't do that. You don't do that in your community. And, you know, we we, we got to have more respect for one another. Once we respect our community, I wouldn't throw paper in your yard. I don't expect you to throw paper in my yard. You know, and that makes a difference. That That's mindset. That makes you feel good about yourself. The same grass that grow in Frenchman Bend grows on Washington Street. <laughs> ain't, right. the God, ain't God good? Right. Now, right. if I maintain my grass and keep it cut, and in and, and my neighborhood, it'll look like what? The uh, Frenchman B. Amen? Amen. We got to respect. That's where it started. Our community needs to respect. And if we can set a image of showing that, hey, the District B community, grass cut and, you know, everything looking fine, why can't E and D do it? Why can't A and B do it? And for you know, we have a beautiful community. Our kids will feel more safe for our education will come together. You know, I just can't see. You know, I hear all the time, uh, if you, I hear all the time, well, the white folks on the board, we can't, get, you know, they got control. I can't see any human being in the right stage of mind that would deny a child the education or misuse their funding, their son in there, with, in the right stage of mind. Now, you spend $32 million in Bastrop Way, is it? <laughs> I mean, I mean, what, you know what $32 million are do? Man, we should have the finest school system almost in the parish. I mean, in the, in the northeast Louisiana. And we don't even, and the key thing, we need to stop putting our money into an old 100, 200 years old building and build a state of our education from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. They'll put it in one location that save on maintenance. They, why do we keep repairing something? If, 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 if we build one side of Bachelor Pie or, or any school, 10 years, the other side going to be down. We, we, we're waiting our time. We need a one central location education system here in, in Mohawk's Parish. And you watch businesses come. You watch the attitude change. We must do that. That's a must to survive. And we're going to be able to survive, go back, and businesses come in like we used to have. You know, Bachelor had a lot of businesses at one time. 
you know, when you was a young man, we had, hey, go back to African America, we had our own stove back in the 50s when I was a child. But they just told down a landmark, uh, uh, Alpha Smith store. I call it Alpha Smith slab now. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, we got to do it. We got to pull our pants up, you know, and stand up like men, young men out there. It's good. I wish I was still young again. Let's do the right thing. I'm not saying that those TV guys you see with their pants down, them, that's a that's an act. <laughs> All right? You, you, but you got to be real. Well, you're dealing with it and look professional and come out and show your respect for your community. Take pride in your community. I think they say pride, spirit, and progress. Well, take pride. Young people, take pride. Okay? Spirit. Keep the spirit up. When we take pride and keep the spirit up, then we can have progress. That's what we need as a community. And I I'm, I'm feel good about it, and I know we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Young people going to do it uh, right now. We're not going to think about what happened in the past. We, we're going to deal with the present and plan for the future. That should be our goal. Right. And, and I don't want to sit here because we're going to take an intermission. But, 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 but before we go, I want, you just blew my mind with about the $32 million and 24% going to administration. Administration, uh, not faculty and staff. Um, I, I was just watching a, 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 a news broadcast or a, a TikTok reel or something. I think it was in Philadelphia or somewhere on the East Coast. The mayor came in, and he went to a school board meeting. He found out that the school curriculum had put in this pornography, uh, teaching kids about pro- pornography, these two books about teaching the little boys about sucking tummies, little banana or whatever. So the mayor stepped in and told him that he had talked to the DA, and if they don't resign, he's going to bring charges against all of them. And, and, and what I'm hearing sounds criminal. Am, am I correct, Bishop? Very criminal. And let, let me share one thing. Uh, when you're talking about the mayor of a city, the city of Baxter, the mayor, we need to be more involved in the education system because 80% of the kids that make up the Mohouse Parish School live with inside the city. That means we have a responsibility. We, uh, we should be knowing what's going on education as a city government, what's going on. Because now, you, for instance, right here next door to you, I, I mean, this is for you probably for your time. Uh, but you remember when we integrated, care did not change. Okay, then they, they formed their own city government in Monroe. See, and then they took control of what happened in the kids inside the city. They go to the city school. Mohouse, we're controlled by the parish school system that really not doing anything for the inner city of the school. Let me just call it like it is. I ain't going to be biting my tongue. And we, 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 we had an education system that really would focus and put their money on the table for the inner city kid, we wouldn't have the crime we have today, right here in Bastion. Bastion is a small town, okay? You can almost, everybody know everybody. Everybody, almost kin to everybody, okay? Most definitely. Uh, now, like I say, 80, 85, 95% African American community now, okay? The first African American uh, councilman, all councilmen. Now, the ball is in our court. The ball is in our court. Now, can we work together and move this city and make progress? The future we will know shortly. I, I, you know, I, I'm not. I'm not there looking back at what happened when John was there, when he was there, and who in the area. I'm looking at the present right here, and the future for this community. And we, I, I, I feel real good with the board we have. I think everybody have an open mind. I'm looking forward to working with them. Like I said, I attend all the meetings, and I have seen them, you know, uh, do functions and some of the things. I think they have an open mind for change, change, progress. You know, some people are scared of change. But like I say, progress, make them feel better. <laughs> you know, you can't make progress if you're not ready to change. You know, that's my philosophy. Right. We got to do things differently. I hope that we have the mindset. I feel good about it. I keep saying it as I, as I think about the people that sit there on the board, now that we can go forward. Right. You know, it's our responsibility. I think everybody that sit there, 
have the city at heart. I really do. I feel good about it. And I'm looking for Can't get there fast enough. And I thank God for putting me in this position at time. He know time. All things done in God time. But he know the need of the community. He know the need. We need we, we money is everywhere in the state. We need to we don't apply. I mean, you take for instance, other cities get money for economic development. We don't even go to uh business meetings down in Baton Rouge. We don't have enough, you know. We sit here. A, a closed mouth won't be fair, huh? You close your mouth, you can't, you can't get fair. You gotta open your mouth. You gotta you gotta go where where the dollar is. You gotta go to Baton Rouge. We got a surplus in this state. This state is not hurting. We need to go to Baton Rouge like other cities and other municipalities and, and, and apply. You got to apply. In other words, if you don't apply yourself, you don't get into here for yourself, right? We got, as a city, got to apply ourselves, go there. We got state representatives. We got senators. We, those people know our need, but if we sit back uh, too proud to even, you know, Go, and our city is going going down, but I think a change is about to come. I really feel good with this council. I think we can all work together, along with our mayor and all. You know, we are here to one. We are we are one, one body, one body, one government body, and we're gonna again. We're not gonna sit back and watch our education system continue to fail. Our police department underfunded, uh, underrepresented. We're not going to sit back any longer for that. We're not going to sit and stand for this crime. We're going to come up with solutions for crime. I'm telling you, if we do education and the people get in the right stage of mind, the crime is going to be gone. It's it, it, it going it to be, bastard not that big. All we got to do is unite. Well, you know, I'm just, I'm just stunned. Um, I'm going back to what you're talking about. This 32 million, we're gonna take an intermission. But I want, I want to say this, Bishop. When we, when we start dealing with this crime, let's make sure it's white collar and blue collar. Oh yes, definitely. Because one is leading to the other. Yes. And once you stop the white, I think the blue will fall in line. It feeds off one of them. It feeds off one of them. I mean. If, uh, hey, our children is not bringing drugs into the community. They can't afford. It. They don't have a plane. They don't have. They don't have any connection. Okay, those guns are coming here. Our kids don't have. They're coming in from white collar crime. I mean, it, it, it's Wall Street crime. I can call. We go to Wall Street if you like to. Okay, that's feeding down into small communities. This is designed. It's not by accident. This is the design. What's going on? It, we're not the only city going through it. But we're going to stop it here in Bastrop and Mohouse Perry. We're going to come together and let white collar crime. We do not want that poison. We don't want those guns in our community in the wrong, hand, in the wrong hands. Sure, I, I, look, I'm, I'm not against gun, man. Need to hunt. This is, this is paradise state, okay? Mm-hmm. No, sportsman state, okay? Uh, uh, my father hunt. We lived off the land, okay? But we need to know that guns don't kill people. People kill that gun don't never. You, I never seen a gun shoot go off and shoot anybody, okay? Unless someone behind the trigger. I don't care how many, how many ammunition they got, how many they don't have. Somebody got to have a mindset to pull that trigger, and it's happening. And like I say, until we stop Wall Street, white collar crime, down to blue collar crime. See, we got to stop it from the bottom up. We, right, we, right. If we stop, they, they'll, move, they'll go away. They'll find them another hiding place. See, all those people that are misusing this community, they're going to move on. Because they, 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 they orchestrating the white, the, 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 the white collar crime. Exactly, exactly. They, see, they, they, know, they know how to play. They know how to play us against one another. We got to be solid. One solid community, black and white. Black and white. Most of them, I'm going to tell you the truth, most of the white folks have moved out. Right, right, I mean, right. You know, I mean, now they done moved out. Now it's really up to us and those who want to stay and see this community grow. That his white family have history here too. Okay, and they want to keep Bath alive, and I want to. I, I go back one hundred years. I go back when my family go before than one hundred years because my grandma now she was alive, she'd be almost one hundred fifty. <laughs> okay, right, right, right. But, but like I said, we. 
how to do it. I keep I want to keep expecting that it's not Bradford gonna go there and make the changes and save the world, but we can. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying if we work together, we can do it. It's not that one person can go there and do it. It's gonna take a community. We're gonna have to stop speeding. You know, respect one another. We we and and well, I want to share one more thing before you take a break. So we have. I look at Bradford everywhere I go. I've been around the world, practically. And uh, I always find someone from Bastrop. Okay? Uh, we have, I guess, people all around the world that can help us become a city, uh, move us to the 21st century, if we just open and receive. And we don't have lack of knowledge. We just have lack, lack of receiving See, once we learn to receive people, we, you'll be surprised what's right here in Bassett right now that could help a lot of the problems we have. People's right here. Within that four-and-a-half-mile radius, and that's all Bassett consists of, the city, the city limit. Right. Okay. I mean, we, we, I know the parish there, but don't talk about that four-and-a-half-mile radius. We got to bring economic development into that four-and-a-half-mile radius. Something we can't bring in just minimum wage job and expect people to put their stop. Uh, other words, street talk. Stop their hustle. <laughs> I'm gonna get you, if you want me to get, hey, we're gonna have to bring something worth stopping their hustle. Okay, stop taking the Wall Street and the white collar crime poison. Okay, we're gonna have to put something that will stop their hustle. A job where they can take care of their family. They have a health plan. You know, a man feel good if he got him. Uh, 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 he he got a job. He taking care of his family. He he, he have a health plan. You know, but, and that work for everybody. Cause if we get more job and, and more people get a health plan, they can get out the state of the system. See, we we we, we want people want they want. I know they want. I'm down here with them every day. They're not sitting here just don't want. They just don't know how. Nobody the ones that do know how won't bring it forward. You know. It's all our responsibility, I guess. Uh, in, in, in biblical terms, we, we are all disciples. We all got to make disciples, okay, one another. Everybody is somebody. And uh, that's why I always feel, that's where my heart I'm feeling. I'm, you know, God knows my heart. And I have definitely have bachelor heart because anywhere I go in this country or uh, uh, out of country, first thing they ask you, uh, place of birth, please. Bash stop, lose down. I don't care how successful. I'm not, not like some of these successful guys go pro and, and they say, where you from? Monroe. And you're born right there on Hewitt Street. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you're born in Bastrop. You know, I'm proud. I'm a proud native of Bastrop, Louisiana. I tell them about the world. I'm, I'm, I'm from Bastrop. And then again, too, when y'all go pro and go to all to make this great success, pro or professional, whatever you go, when you start making six digits, Remember where you come from. <laughs> Nobody said, you know, we, we got, I'm not going to call a name, but we got people being in the athletic, uh, education, and everything happens successful right here in Bastrop, but when they forgot where they come from. They, they, make, they make six digits. They, make, they, 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 they could at least donate to a community boys club or something, you know, or, or, or a foundation. We got we to gotta understand how important it is to give back as people. And then you'll be surprised what the attitude of the crime. I keep saying, call that people don't only hustle people. They ain't going to lay down and die. They got to live. Right, right, right. Right, right, They got to live. And, and, and they only hustle. And they taking whatever is available. If, you, if, you, if we can't get them a job, someone's going to give them drugs. Okay, we, I ain't hmm. talking about uh, hmm. little minimum wage job. I'm talking about a job where they can raise a family, buy a home, feel like somebody. And then when they get to that point, they wouldn't want drugs even in their lifestyle. You know, some of them even stop doing some of the things they're doing themselves. But until we come up with a plan that can empower the family, Got to empower the family. Do we empower our family and our community? We 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 are uh, we in trouble. But we gonna get through this during my lifetime. I really believe that. Right, right. I really believe that. And, right. And, and, and it's just a matter. Uh, 
doing what we got to do to make it happen. Yes, sir. Well, we're going to take this another intermission. We're still here. I'm sitting here, y'all, and got hypnotized. Uh, that's my uncle, man. And, 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 and people don't know he done lived and been through some things. And, and, and he can tell you some things. Wisdom and knowledge come with that. It's just not a lot of people, you know, we educated, but we haven't lived no life. We haven't lived. So you really can't reach the youth because you haven't been in their circumstances. But when we get back from this intermission, we want to get uh, your final thoughts and uh, share some of the programs. I know you're mentoring young men and share some of the things you're doing with Seeking God Ministry when we return after this intermission. We're still here with newly elected city councilman and man for the job. Our own Eric Mays, I'm going to say, Mr. Charles H. Bradford, when we return after this intermission. Welcome back, welcome back. This portion of the show is being brought to you by 44 Million ENT, Stepping Stones, LLC of Jonesboro, Louisiana, and Northeast Louisiana Counseling here in Bastrop, Louisiana. Hey, we're still here with Bishop Charles H. Bradford to you old schools, a.k.a. Charlie Chuck is still here in the building with us. Mr. 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 Bradford, Bishop Unk, before we let you go, uh, I want to get your final thoughts, but share with us some of the things you're doing through Seeking God Ministry. Through Seeking God Ministry, we are church. We have a youth program. We uh, also have a, you know, housing program. Uh, we're trying to start a shelter for battle women in this community. That's one of the things that we're. That re- I'm really excited about. We just uh, relocated our office there. And we're going to try to turn it into a community center there in the Camille area in the, in the district. And uh, we're just working to try to reach young kids. I I, I work dearly. I like working with what are ch- called children in trouble, single parents, because they just they just need to be loved. And we can learn to show those kids love. You'd be surprised what we have among us. No, we we don't need to. If you have a parent and a mother that's successful and and, and can give you the things you need to keep you on the right road, that's great. I I I, I want to commend those parents, but for those single parents and and kids that don't have guidance, you know, we got to reach for them. Them our children. We got to pull them up by the boot. We got to show them yes, there's hope, there's faith, and you'll be surprised what's among them. All those guys that carry no gun, put them down. Come, come, come to seeking God ministry and see me, and I can show you, show you there's a better way and a safer way in your community to live and love your brother and everybody grows and successful. Because we're gonna bring the necessary things that you need in this community. Like I say, uh, brother William working good over there, at, uh, uh, Robinson William. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's doing a wonderful job. And he's going to start reaching for kids, single parents' kids, and we're going to try to put these young folks on the right track. Shout out to Mr. Randy while we're talking about Mr. Randy. Shout out to Mr. Randy. Mm-hmm. He's doing good down there. He's in District B, and uh, like I say, and we spread this on out through the city, you know, east side, west side, north side, east side, uh, uh, south side. We must reach. Please, parents, adults, if you see a child, that you know he's in the wrong direction. You you you, you know where he's headed because you 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 know it when you see it. See, don't turn your don't turn your head. Reach, reach, pull up one, reach. Don't turn your head. I can't deal with it. I, yes, you can. If God put him in your vision, in your sight, that must be a reason for. It. You know, we must pull. You know how? And, and again, uh, we know who they are. <laughs> again, you know, we know who they are. Some of the parents, parents need a decent job for she can do some uh, uh, for her uh, child. McDonald's not going to take care of no child. We got to bring manufacturing uh, production companies in here that are paying no less than $15 an hour. 
<laughs> we need a job that pay fifteen dollars an hour, a health plan. I'm gonna, that's the key to getting us out of poverty. This community is a poverty community within that four, and you know our income don't even compete with some cities. Okay, I think we like that eight thousand a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eight, <laughs> what you gonna do with that? What you gonna do with that? Eight thousand a year. You gonna you never buy a home with it. The bank won't even look at you. They making it grossing eight thousand dollars a year. You know what I mean? We got to get the income on our salary. Up. We got to. We got to go. I'm looking forward to go go to bat for Bastrop. I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I keep saying that because the things I do know, if, if everybody worked together, what God have gave me and gave them, we can't do nothing to have success. You know, we we're going we we're we're going. I guess well, the dollars at for our community. We're going to bat for our community. I, I feel good about this council. We're going to bat strongly economically for our community. When we do that, we can uh, say education. We're going to bat for it. No longer, no longer. We can sit back and, and, and let the education system not have any input on the children in this in this city. We, we're, we're responsible. Them, 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 them kids are our kids. They're city kids, and we got to bring the necessary programs into this city that will advance our children to the next day. That's our responsibility. Every parent, every elected official. You know, you got a responsibility. You can't sit back and just draw your check. You got to work for your check. I always work for my life. I can go back. Uh, you say, take something back. I remember picking bottles about the ditches. We, it was 13 of them. We couldn't afford to just sit back. I ain't, my parents taught me not to rob, steal, or burglar, ride, or kill anybody. You know, I always try to do the right thing. But like I say, uh, we can do it. I'm 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 excited. I, I just want to share it with you. Thank God for this position that I can have a voice at the table. You know, a voice at the table, and people, you can believe, I will not be silent. <laughs> you know. And you know, Uncle, we we we, we me, man, I'm so happy that you uh, have finally got this seat. Divorce your opinion, because like I say, people, it's none other more deserving. And a lot of times, you guys in Bear Scrub, you don't let people live down they past. You don't leave any room to grow. You you still stuck in the old mindset. But one thing, Unc, I want to let you know, mm-hmm. it's not for them to know that you didn't change. Mm-hmm. I've seen the transformation and, and, and the transformation between you and God. Mm-hmm. Uh, people going to hold on to the old Charlie Chuck. That's why I put it out there. This Charlie Chuck, now it's Bishop Charles H. Bradford. Mm-hmm. So for the ones that are still holding on to Charlie Chuck, I want you to know this is Bishop Charles says Bradford in the building on the seat. And now the seat just got hot and the situation just got hotter. Bishop, last final thought. Well, again, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to uh, be heard. I thank God for using me. Uh, I thank God for the change. Like you said, I mean, God, God is good. He, if he changed me, he can change anybody. <laughs> I just feel like that about it. You know. Hey, hey, come to my church, I'll give you my testimony. But, exactly, right, exactly. But, but uh, if he change me, he can change anybody. And nothing too hard for God. You, you share that with your children. No matter what the situation is, no matter what's going on, grab that child by the head and put the pants up, get ready. He's somebody. And nothing too hard for God. If God is for you, hey, nobody in the world can be against you. Everybody, you know, God, 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 God is good. And I, and I just I just want to share that for this last moment. And we do this if we just love one another. Tell the truth. The truth will be the lie out any time. They think a lie goes fast, but when you get there, the truth there. <laughs> it moves fast. But when you, hey, not, I had a friend, you say, not the beginning, but the end. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, and we're going to move our community. I can see so much for Bastion. I feel like shock. <laughs> well, you, wait, bro. We we shouted for you when you, when you finally got it. Okay, well, hey, hey, I, I see progress in Bastion for a change. And I'm looking forward for my colleagues, my board, the, on the other member, to feel excited I am about doing it. And let's do it. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Yes, sir. We can do it. And and, and other cities throughout this state, this nation, that want to be like Bastion. We can do it. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. That's what we're going to Thank you. Yes, sir. Again, for the opportunity. Yes, sir. Y'all heard it from himself. Bishop Charles H. Bradford, newly elected 
city official, and we want to tell you guys, you know, let's let people grow. Uh, let's share ideals. Let's share culture. Like he said, black and white. This is our city. And for y'all that know, they on Facebook right now and one of them LHSAA sports blogs talking bad about your city. Uh, and only ones can jump up and defend it is the babies on the gridiron that played the game. But I'm here to set the record straight. Scrap City Hill, and we about to rise back again. Hey, I'm your host, Maserati. We want to thank you guys for tuning in. No matter where you are, this has been brought to you by Involved Social and Civic Club, where we understand the social and civic needs of love. Learn, live, and laugh. Until next time, y'all get involved. Y'all stay encouraged. And most of all, y'all stay immersed. We out here. I know you thought it was gone, but I made it through the fire. Turned you back on me, homie, and it was such a surprise. But the struggle out here, everybody just trying to get by. Mama told me a long time ago, keep my grass cut low, so I can see these snakes when they approaching my door. In this game, I seen a lot of soldiers sell their soul for the bag. And I seen a lot of close friends fall out behind ass. So I keep my circle tight, family over everything. Family over everything. Over at a young age, don't be scared of never just hang. Man, it's law of attraction, got me moving how I move. Some you win, some you lose, yeah. And life is blessed. Truth had it for innocent child. These streets that got real crazy, these junctions fuck wild. Not to mention, cops killing brothers for fun. Revolutionary prepare from the dough, the chosen one. Yeah.